If I am to be a practical success in business, in family life, and so on, I have to observe the world of particulars. It's particulars that matter. matter, matter. Black intelligence. Bisho Barber Company. Business was established three years ago here in Orem, Utah. So you opened it right before 2020? Yes. Nice, wow. Uh -huh. Like what inspired you to open up when you did? How'd you open your own business? So I worked at a barbershop locally called Daryl's Barbershop on Station. I felt like I was, you know, in a place where my vision wasn't being, being expressed. So I kind of stepped out of there and then started working at a one chair shop at these little studios around here called Sola over there on University Parkway. Okay. And, you know, I established my brand, creating clothing, t-shirts, hats, you know, stickers, and all that oh, stuff. So. You know, just all the little things that I thought were cool, you know, about a barbershop. Yeah. Even though it was a one-chair shop, I was, I always had a vision of making it bigger. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Are there any cool stories? What's crazy stuff happened to you? A lot of the things that have happened to me as a barber have been more of a, I guess, blessing. Um, I've had like clients come out of the woodwork and bless me financially. Um, biggest tip I ever got was a thousand dollars. I had one of my clients when I was buying my home give me ten thousand dollars to like put the down payment on my home. I think uh, that's that's the joy of this, you know. You give so much of yourself in your work, and people see it, so they reciprocate. Uh, you ever heard of? Gandolfos or Rocco's? Yeah. That's me. That's my family, right? Really? Yeah, so oh, that's cool. We used to do sandwiches, and that was like my number one thing that I loved about it mm -hmm. was I could trade sandwiches for anything. Yeah. Do you find yourself bartering with a lot of the oh, customers yeah, definitely. and clients? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> services for services. So, kind of yeah, thing. like I, I used bartered services with the jiu-jitsu guy for me and my daughter yeah. to start jiu-jitsu classes. I've done tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you know? I traded a sandwich. Oh, sandwich. you made a sandwich. A sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that's you got a sandwich tattoo. That's good. Good. And, uh, what was it? Rocco's. Rocco's, man. Yeah. Sammy. He loves Sammy's. This is the Sammy movie, right? Yeah. Uh, no Solo's got that food truck. Yeah, he came here yesterday. He posted it right here in front of me. I'm gonna be out of it like two nights. Over really? Here. Yeah. Just... Why don't you just come, come over here, man? We love sandwiches here. You gonna be doing sandwiches? Just You'll send me. Let's do it. Bro. <laughs> Let's do it. How do you create a welcoming atmosphere in the barbershop? Like, what's important to you for your customers when they come in? What do you want them to feel right away? Number one, welcome. Um, right when you come into a place for me, the most important thing is the welcoming atmosphere. Right when someone comes, hey, welcome guys, how you doing? Hey, just like that. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Good to see you. Hi guys. Um, so yeah, the, as far as like feeling welcome, mu music, that kind of yeah, thing. the music, and that also, also that like the one thing that I kind of pride myself on is like creating subjects in a barbershop where uh, people feel like they can actually talk about it. Like, we'll talk about sports, and we'll be like, oh, we'll have this debate, the Michael Jordan, uh, LeBron debate, or we'll talk about something funny that we've seen on the news, anything. You know, we kind of bring everybody in, and we ask everybody's opinion. That's something that I actually do strategically in my shop, because I'm like, hey, I don't want nobody to feel like they're an outcast. You know, yeah. everybody's welcome at me. Uh, I think it's a huge part of the barber experience, yeah. for sure. In an age of online review and social media and things like that, how do you maintain customer loyalty? What are things that have worked for you to keep your people coming back? I think it's consistency, right? Like, I think when you go to a place, any kind of business, it's about consistency. Yeah. If you're welcomed with a water bottle and doing a great job and taking pictures of you and posting you on their Instagrams, you feel like you're the celebrity, like you're the focal point of it. And I think the difference between my shop and a lot of other ones is we're trying to make our customers feel like they are the VIPs. They are the ones who make us, you know, because it is you guys, you know, it, it is the customer, right? The customer gives us the impulse to do better, you know, and, you know, you guys help us pay our bills. So we want to get the best equipment. We want to go above and beyond the expectations of just your typical barbershop, you know what I mean? Becoming one-on-one -on -one personal with somebody. Like, uh, I have relationships with my clients. It's funny. I get to know them, like know them intimately. Who's their girlfriend? Like when they got married, what they did over the summer. You remember these things. And when you remember somebody's story, even if they haven't seen you in six months, they're like, hey, I haven't seen you, yeah. John or, or Joe or whatever. Hey, welcome back. 
how was the trip to Alaska or whatever? Like they're like, oh, you remember that? You have a great memory. It just opens it up. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's what like, it's about. It's sure. How do you stay inspired to keep going? You know, to stay motivated, get creative. No matter what you're doing, it gets repetitive after a certain amount of time. How do I stay inspired? Honestly, I think it's just the love of the culture. I am a huge hip hop fan. I used to be a hip hop artist. I used to do hip hop music, right? I used to rap. I used to do these things. And the barbershop culture was something else that drew me into. Right? Like, I used to see Nas with the part and the fade, you know? The ensemble, the look. You know? I never went to a show without a dope cut. I never did anything without hitting up my barber because it was the boost that I needed, you know? Yeah. Like, you get a dope cut, man. You're ready to go to a, to freaking Tarjay real quick and go for a stroll, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just one of those things, you know? Um, I love the power in that, you know, the power creation. Uh, being a barber is actually an art form. It's called tonsorial artistry, right? The art of cutting hair. I guess I consider myself an old head. And a lot of the things that I, I do, like as a barber now, a lot of the young guys probably don't do, right? But I try to tell them, do these things because these are like the bread and butter things. You know what I'm saying? The things that uh, that clients look for. Like, I don't know how many times I've been here in Utah and I've heard, you guys use straight rate. And then I'm like, what? It's like, this is a barbershop. Why wouldn't we use straight rate? Yeah. yeah, you know how to do fades. We're, this is a barbershop. Of course we know how to do fades. You know how to do African-American hair? Yes, I know how to do. This like, I don't shop. get that, you know? Like, those things have blow my mind a little bit. Right, but maybe it's just like uh, I want to keep that tradition alive. Like, yeah, that true like the you know, purest to an extent. Yeah, the purest. Yeah, the purest to the extent. You know, the aromas, the smells of the barbershop. It's just all everything, man. It's like aromatherapy. You're speaking to people. It's everything. Absolutely. You're like an air freshener. Yeah, everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Your wife yeah. gets home. You get home to your wife and she smells your neck and stuff. Yeah. Like that, you know? It's a good lead into the next question. Uh, what advice do you have for aspiring barbers or individuals looking to do kind of what you did? Start your own thing. You know? In this day and age, what advice would you give to a young barber? Uh, wise counsel. <laughs> have wise counsel. Uh, talk to a lot of people who have done it before you. Sure. I am a firm believer in this. You know, yeah. more than anything, I think when you start something, when you do something, yeah. uh, you um, should have all your ducks in a row. Make sure that you can handle it. Because, you know, being a business owner is not for the week. Many business owners think, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of it, I thought that for a moment in time, I invest extra amount of money, six months later, I make it all back. No, it don't work like that. You have to really, really be mentally strong and not feel like you're defeated because things don't turn out the way you want right away, right? You gotta really put your head down Try different things and know that sometimes it's okay to pivot. It's okay to try something different. It's okay to uh, to feel down sometimes, but if your eye is focused on the goal at hand, you're gonna make it. Just keep going. I, I think that's the thing. Like you can't let people discourage you because people are going to. Even the people you most love, sometimes you're gonna have that. But if you have a dream, man, like I, I would just suggest never give up on it. Like yeah. just keep pushing for it, man. Cause I mean, you only have one shot. You get one opportunity sometimes, you know? And I don't want to be the guy, like, I've known so many older people than me. Man, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done that. Like, all that aside, like, that don't matter to me. Like, if I fail at this, at least I learned a lesson. You know what I'm saying? I love that business ownership really is that. You know, like, you, you're you not in there for a certain amount of time. You, you don't have a retirement date when it comes no. to this kind of business thing. It's like golf to me. Right. You know, you get the shots you played for, the, right. good, the good shots throughout. Right. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a lot of garbage. These guys love golf, so you're talking their language. <laughs> I'm a baseball player, too, so like three out of ten. Right. You know, it's a Hall of Fame career. It is. And, and in business, to me, sometimes that's the same way. Right? Right. When, when you're turning the keys to a business, it's, it's a totally different matter, so I get it. I I'm glad I'm talking to you, man. You inspired me. I appreciate that. <laughs> How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected your barbershop? What strategies did you have to implement when it was going down to stay alive? So what was funny about the whole COVID thing, right? When everything happened initially, obviously we were in shock, right? But I was like, oh man. But this is a time where I didn't have all of this, right? I didn't have the eight chair shop and the 10 barbers or whatever. It was more me by myself and I had to support my family, right? Uh, I had a baby on the way, I had my baby boy, Elijah. It was terrifying, right? But I realized something like, I couldn't let fear cripple me, right? 
I just used all the resources I could, you know? In the midst of it all, I think I was more successful in 2020 than, than everybody else because I was just like, I'm gonna go for it. I don't care, like, yeah. might as well. You might know, as well. all the other barbershops are closed. You know, I will like pay somebody to like disinfect every day. Like I had a company come in and like disinfect with COVID killing crap or whatever all over the chairs and I made sure everybody had hand sanitizer and we were doing it. Yeah, and we had masks and, and I just did it, man. I just cut because I needed to, you know, yeah. I could not eat. Out of necessity. Yeah, out of necessity. So it was really simple. I just disinfected everything and I would just let customers one at a time, nobody could come in you know, without an appointment. So you kind of smooth sailed through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have too much of a problem. I love that. Just as far as community goes, do you have any upcoming, anything you want to shout out, projects, collaborations within the community that you're you're involved in? Uh, yeah. Center Point Church. Uh, I attend that church. I'm going on seven years there. Also CPR, Center Point Recovery. I actually lead that. Uh, I am a leader in recovery and Christian-based recovery at my church. Been doing it for three years. Clothing line? Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Uh, hats, shirts, stuff like that again. I want to do another drop soon enough. Uh, we do have a uh, new commercial online right now uh, for Vicio Barber Company. And yeah, that's about it. Oh, where can we find you? Uh, it's at VicioBarberCompany.com. Okay. Uh, Instagram? Instagram, Facebook, same. TikTok? TikTok, follow. 